Chag Sameach, good Yom Tev, a happy Sukkot and a happy Simchas Torah coming up the next two days, the uh, Monday night through Wednesday night. So this week concludes a month filled with Yom Tevs and holidays that we went crazy not knowing what day is what as the famous uh, 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 saying joke that was going around uh, here is Monday morning and suddenly it's already Friday Uh, the whole week in one day with all the holidays breaking the month and it's draining and complaints and pressure Uh, you know when another holiday another holiday and we're so confused, we don't know anymore what's flying with us. So let me share with you a little story that will bring perspective to these holidays. My father of blessed memory was a Hasid born and raised in Russia and in a communist Russia where in those days, they didn't allow religion, didn't allow uh, education of children. And he was amongst the Hasidim who supported the work of the previous Rebbe with maintaining Jewish education underground, mikves, and, um, and uh, uh, underground and education and so on. And he was heavily involved in maintaining those yeshivas. And as a result, like many other Hasidim, he was arrested and paid the price and spent seven years between jail and Sibir and Siberia suffering until he was liberated and finally left Russia, um, um, escaped and was saved and uh, got married as an orphan to my mother, who was also an orphan in France, and were sent by the Rebbe to Morocco to lead the Jewish community and establish um, a a Jewish education for boys and girls, um, and was there for 42 years, and the rest is history. So in one of those years, of those seven years that he was in, um, in, um, in a jail in Sibir, uh, in labor camps, he uh, was a, uh, this was one of the better times that he had. He worked as an accountant in a certain firm. He had a good head, uh, better than mine, and was good with numbers. And he was an accountant in a certain firm. And they uh, came in that year when, and that was one of the better times that he had there was a good job and uh, a good uh, good position. That year, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and uh, the first days of Sukkot, the last days of Sukkot, were not like this year, middle of the week, Tuesday and Wednesday, but they were... Uh, um, at the end of the week, Thursday, Friday. So Rosh Hashanah was Thursday, Friday, followed by Shabbos. The following week, Shabbos was Yom Kippur. And the following week, Tuesday, Wednesday, the, uh, sorry, Thursday, Friday, the first days of Sukkot, followed by Shabbos. And then Thursday, Friday again, Simchas Torah, followed by Shabbos. So within a three-week period, all the, or um, within a three-week period, all these holidays following each other, three days not come, not showing up to work, was work was Saturdays. Shabbos was day works, was work days, was days that he had to work. He did not show up, and they were nice to him. They were okay, you know. He didn't show one day a week. The, the, his boss, the employer, understood, and he was a good worker, was worth keeping quiet. But here came 
Rosh Hashanah, three days in a row, he's not showing up. And where did he go? Where did he hide? He was scared that they will find him in the middle of the holiday and they will transport him and he will desecrate the Yom Tev. So he hid in a pit. He found a pit somewhere in the forest and he went in the pit and he spent there the three days of Rosh Hashanah. It was a good hiding place. No one found him. He went there for Sukkot also. That's where he was. That's where he, was. he spent not 24, not 48, but 72 hours of the holiday of Sukkot as well. Spending there. That was his Sukkot. That was his Shul. That's where he prayed. That's where he did everything. Three days. Good hiding place. No one found him. He came to work on Sunday morning. His boss looks at him a little smile and I like understands okay we know your secret please behave didn't say anything but that, that was the hint following week again on Simcha story again three days he's going to his hotel five-star hotel that no one will be able to find him hiding there and celebrating Simchas Torah, saying the brach of Shecheyonu. Shecheyonu. Wow, Baruch Hashem. No one could find him. He could celebrate in freedom. He could dance in the pit on his own. What a getaway. Comes Sunday morning to work. His boss tells him, you know, you played the game. I was able to hide. I was able to, to cover up for you. But not anymore. I can't do it anymore. I'm in trouble now. I have to report. And I did report. And indeed, they took him away from there and sent him for, this, for the winter months of Sibir, the cold weather of Sibir, where they put him, they gave him the work of building railroads in this cold, freezing weather for the next six months of the winter. When my father shared the story, he didn't complain about the six months of, or the few months the, that bitter winter but on the but he said the story in a way of praising Hashem that at least no one was able to find him in his five-star hotel in the pit over Rosh Hashanah over the first two days of Sukkot and over Simchas Torah. Dear friends I think there is a message in this story and I think we have what to celebrate despite all challenges, despite all tzores, may Hashem take them away from us and may Hashem take away the COVID from us. Nonetheless, for the time being, we have what to celebrate. We could celebrate in the freedom of our home or at shul while keeping social distance. Whichever way, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Sheikh, Yonu Vikimonu Vigionu Lizmanazeh, the Torah is happy. Hashem is happy. May we help Hashem and the Torah rejoice as well. Good Yom Tev. Chag Sameach.